Now, let's talk about Irish Catholic President Joe Biden. He's always telling us about what a devout Catholic he is, but he hosted a very non-Christian Easter weekend at the White House, not only banning religious-themed designs from the Easter egg art contest, but also there was a much reaction to him promoting Transgender Day of Visibility, as if, you know, that group isn't visible enough the other 364 days. Uh, it's not really a day. Uh, and uh, he posted this message on Easter Sunday, which, Josh, is one of the most holy days on the Christian calendar. The reaction, I've got to say, was uh, strong. Yeah, I mean, Joe Biden, from what I saw, got ratioed pretty badly on Twitter, pretty much everyone defending it. Uh, was similarly ratioed, including Mayor Eric Adams in New York City. He was badly ratioed. Look, America is still a majority Christian country. America was founded as a fairly explicitly Christian country. I mean, yes, we obviously have a First Amendment right to free exercise. I myself am Jewish, and, and we are not forced to obey the certain dictates of a certain church or anything like that. But the, but the American founders were, were fairly explicit about their Christianity. And while America has changed in many ways, to this day, it remains both demographically, statistically, in terms of church attendance, but also just more generally speaking, more culturally, it remains a Christian country. And, and this whole controversy, this tempest in a teapot, I think is emblematic of the fact that the Democratic Party is really out over its skis when it comes to the LGBT agenda in general and its dissonance, its irreconcilable dissonance with the fact that the American people, by and large, are still commonsensical when it comes to sheer logic and are still Christian when it comes to religious identity. And it also puts the Democrats, Rita, between a rock and a hard place when it comes to their intersectional coalition of aggrieved interests, because black voters actually, according to most polls, are really starting to peel away from Joe Biden. Donald Trump is picking up 20, up maybe 25 percent of black voters. If that number stands, Joe Biden's going to lose the election on that metric alone. Here's the catch, Rita. The reason why, why it's difficult is because Black voters, at least on the polling that I have seen for the past 10, 15 years very consistently, are not as down with the LGBT agenda overall as white voters are in America. So with every SOP to the intersectional LGBT and especially the transgender lobby that Joe Biden makes like this, he's going to risk hemorrhaging black support even more. So he, even politically speaking, he's caught between a rock and a hard place. But, but the most important point here is that this is obviously a direct shot at Christians. He cannot afford to lose any more blue collar support. And unfortunately, he's heading in that direction, I think. Mm. And it's not just black voters who uh, aren't on board with a lot of this activism. Uh, Hispanic voters are probably even less right. so. Uh, and uh, the polling there is also showing that Trump's gaining enormous numbers. In fact, there was a New York Times uh, poll recently that had the uh, Hispanics opting for Trump by some 6% over uh, Biden, which, you know, if you said that 10 years ago or even in 2020, you, you would think that was impossible. 100 percent. Yeah. I mean, if, if you if you go down the list and you look at basically all the demographics that have given Democrats comfortable margins in most recent presidential elections, obviously 2016 notwithstanding, if you, so it's black voters, Hispanic voters, and really young voters, 18 to 35. Democrats are losing support in all three of those demographics. So right now, the Hispanic vote in America seems like it's basically a toss-up. It is well within the margin of error. Some polls show it slightly to Trump. Some show yep. it going slightly to Biden. I mean, it, it's really quite crazy, Reid. I cannot underscore this point enough. Going back 20 years, it was, it was around 2004, there was a progressive think, think tanker by the name of Roy Teixeira. And he wrote a famous book at that time called The Emerging Democrat Majority. And his basic argument was that demographics were going to make the Republican Party go extinct in the next 25, 30 years because of the, because of the Hispanic vote alone. Roy Teixeira, to his credit, has formally disavowed and renounced his own book. But the Democratic Party officially, unfortunately, is still continuing to hemorrhage Hispanic voters. It is a huge, huge, huge deal. And what the mainstream media and the Democratic Party miss is that Hispanic voters themselves, Rita, are not any happier about the situation on the southern border than white or black voters are. They are the ones oftentimes who are actually disproportionately being harmed by the crime, the trafficking, mm, the drugs absolutely. and all that the open border entails. And I think there's also ill feeling towards those who conflate legal migrants with illegal migrants, even with criminals. And, and the Democrats are guilty of doing that on a regular basis. Josh Hammer, thank you so much for your time this evening.